All right. Well, hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our Fridays with Fiscal for December 15th, 2023. We are going to be talking about the proration utility today. And OK, let's just make sure everyone's in here in the Zoom um, that was on the waiting list. And um, OK, so um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so we'll, we're talking about the proration utility, which is something that you might have heard about before or used before in previous years. We used to, at one point, we talked about this, I think, with the calendar year-end meeting, but um, obviously there's like so much in the year-end meetings that we talk about already that we thought it would be kind of nice to split this one out and um, just kind of focus in on like exactly what this tool does and the different options they kind of go into using it. So, okay. Um, I do have my chat open. So if you have questions along the way, let me know. Um, I dare say that this one could be a shorter training, <laughs> just looking over like the notes I have. So like, we should definitely have time, you know, if you have questions. Um, but then, you know, sometimes I say, oh, this will be a shorter one. And I end up talking for the full hour anyway. So we'll see, no promises, <laughs> but, um, but we'll see how it goes. So, um, okay, so uh, let's talk about, let me just make sure I'm set up here for clicking. Okay, the very first thing, we're just gonna kind of talk about real quick, like what is the proration utility? And the basics of what this tool does is it generates a spreadsheet with prorated amounts based on account filters used and an amount the user enters. In addition to that, what it's actually doing is it's pulling the expended amounts from the accounts, and then it's kind of figuring out like how those should be paraded across um, those different accounts. And that to me is like the really helpful part of this tool. Uh, once you generate this data, and once you create this uh, sort of spreadsheet within the software, you can download that, uh, you download that created period spreadsheet into Excel. So that can be used for additional formulas or like any other purposes um, in spreadsheet form. And then, and this was added like a little bit uh, after the original proration utility was added. So like, if you haven't been in there for a while, this is something that it's not like new at this point, but it's new word to the utility. Uh, you can create a PO CSV, fi uh, CSV file to import and create a purchase order. Um, so once we start talking about the examples of using the, this are the workers' compensation premium and insurance costs, uh, some of those things are, re are uh, situations where you'd want to create this spreadsheet based on the prorated amounts and then be able to post those to accounts to like, say, the benefit accounts um, to have, you know, whatever that premium was adequately spread out across those accounts. Um, so, uh, so that, so that's a nice feature of this, um, the workers' compensation premium. Now this one, and this is going to be the example that we talk about today. This is like generally the example that we use for this. Although of course, like there, there can be definitely other uses. Um, I know that the workers' compensation, so districts do that a variety of ways, uh, in my understanding. And, you know, some of them can put it on like a payroll item and then, you know, post it with, you know, post it with the pending transaction. Um, and so this might, this isn't the only way to do it, to do workers' compensation, but I'm hoping that kind of talking through this option, like, I don't know how many people know that this is there or how often it's being used. So this could be like a, another option that may help depending on, you know, how each district may post their workers' compensation. And before we jump ahead, um, I'm going to flip over to our wiki real quick. So I'm just on our homepage of our wiki. And we're not going to spend too much time on the page, but I just want to show you in the USAS documentation, we are going to let it load for a second. And um, we're going under utilities, which this one's like really easy for me to remember because it's proration utility. So it's under utilities. And right here is our documentation page for this. And um, so we have, you know, um, a summary of like all this information we're going to talk about today. But, you know, it's all here as well um, in the wiki. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, so then, so our next couple of slides, we're starting to go talk through the, um, the different options within this program. So you know, you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna actually hop right in here, and let me let me go back to the homepage because <laughs> obviously I was looking in here already. <laughs> but okay, so uh, we're going to utilities. And then we're going to click Proration Utility, and that's going to take us right to this tool. And we have a couple options here to get us started. So the time period, now I mentioned this is going to pull, you know, expended amounts to base like what, you know, how the um, figures are going to be or going to be prorated across. And so the time period is what's going to determine that. I'll give you a little better example that kind of um, shows how this works a little bit better. But for now, I well, let's just um, you know look at the fact that we have month to date, calendar year to date, and fiscal year to date. So those are our options for the time period that it's going to be based on. When we're talking about something like workers' comp, like I mean, I don't know. I, I think there are definitely different ways they can do that. I think like they they could do it, you know, monthly if they wanted to. At this point in the year, it may be like a calendar year to date thing where they're just going to post it for um, based on their calendar year, like amounts and then the rate that they got. So we'll grab that. Account filter. Uh, we'll we'll go in and look at like a specific one. I am just going to grab one for now, but. Uh, basically, when when we get this data, this data output, once we see that, um, what this is going to do is determine which accounts we're seeing within the group that we're pulling. So we could just say no filter and pull in all of the accounts, but this is what's going to let us like give it a group, you know, tell what parameters. So sorry, I'm scrolling a little bit here, but I have this workers comp proration. And so I can select that. And um, run by appropriation. So uh, we'll we'll run this a couple different ways, but basically that's going to let us see the figures by appropriation account. File name. Uh, this I'm going to leave blank for now. We'll come back to that. Let's just let's go ahead and create because again we're going to do this a couple times. <laughs> uh, but all right. So once we create, so now we get all this data at the bottom here. And let me scroll down gonna kind of and this works like very similar to just like a spreadsheet so I can or or even like with the grids you can change the column sizes so before we even touch anything on here let's just talk about what we're looking at and first I have my account codes so these are all at the expenditure level account code the description is the account code description and then we have our calendar year to date because we told it up here, we want calendar year to date figure. So this is going in here and it's saying, okay, for this expenditure account, here is the calendar year to date expended. And um, what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna flip over. Hang on, I'm sorry, my little zoom thing came up. It's blocking my scroll. So let's look at, I'm gonna look at this account right here. And I have a separate tab uh, that's actually already pulled up here. So I just went to core accounts. I opened the account grid and I went over to expenditure. And then I filtered in for this fund and object. And this very first one is the account that, um, that I was looking at in the proration utility. So when we look at this account code, see, I have these columns on here. And let me see if I can zoom in on this a little bit. So my columns here are fiscal year, month, and calendar year. And my software tracks, and I know we're usually, like a lot of the time when I'm here, I'm just focusing on fiscal year. Like I'm like laser focused in. Sometimes I forget month and calendar year are there because those aren't used like a, a bunch. But um, but for something like this, they definitely, um, they definitely are. So actual expended, here's the fiscal year amount, here's the month to date amount, and here's the calendar to date amount. 
So when we come back, I'm flipping back to the proration utility. So in this very first option where I picked time period, it's specifically saying, which one of those totals do you want me to pull from the account code? The month column, the calendar column, or the fiscal year to date column? And so by picking calendar to date, and I know this one, it's, it's the same amount for uh, fiscal and calendar, but it's this right here that, that we told it to pick. So, so that's where it's coming from. Now, um, let me. I hope this is still okay if I if I'm zoomed out. If um, if it's better when I'm zoomed in and I need to kind of stay there and and do that, please let me know in the chat. But I, I'm gonna try and roll with this so we can see like more of these columns at once. Um. Okay. So, so these are our expended amounts, our actual expended, and. What I'm going to do is just get to the bottom here. Let me just scroll all the way down. Because what I want to show you is that there's this total. And so this is the total of all of the accounts that I selected, all of those expended amounts. And why I want to show that there's this total is because this next column is the prorated percent. And so what this specific program is doing is it's looking at these amounts and it's saying, well, what percent of the total was expended to this account? And so it does the calculation and it says, okay, so this was, you know, it was this is the percentage as a decimal, right? And it figures that out for all of these different accounts. Um, so that it knows now when we do the next step, okay, so how much, so based on how much was expended out of this group, that's how much I want to allocate whatever figure I put in to that account. So, uh, so the next, the next important piece of this that we're going to talk about is this column right here. See, this says prorate amount and what that's labeling is the column next to it. So what we want to do here is we can go ahead and put in, let's put in a figure. I'm just going to put in 75,000. And um, when I hit enter, now you can see this column, prorate amount, it was all zeros before. But what it did is it took this total and then based on the percentages that were calculated, it spread it over all of these different accounts. Let me go to the bottom here. And so now we can see the total of this last column is the total amount that we put in. So if we were to take this, and when we do these later steps, I talked about how we're gonna make a PO, that's the total amount that would be posted, but it would be spread out you know, via um, PO items to all of these different accounts. Okay, now um, let's hit a couple more options here. Sorry for the scrolling. Let me just get back to the top. Um, as far as the other options here, so file name. So I can do, uh, actually let's like make it something completely different. Let's see. Okay, so I can put that in here. And then when I do create, Oops, I'm sorry. I didn't want to do create. I wanted to do download. So um, probably would, should have put my amount in there and everything again. See, it, it does clear it out. But uh, download, sorry, download. And um, if you see up here, this is my downloads. So when I download that spreadsheet now, I have it as whatever file name I entered in here. So let me, let's make like, let's fix this because now I, Messed it up. Okay. Let me scroll over here. Okay, cool. So now I got the prorated amounts in there. And then now let's download it. And see, it's got the new name. So you can change this, like, even while you have the sheet uh, already created. So you could put that in before, you could put that in after whatever works for you. That's just going to, it's just going to name the file that saves on your sheet or on your computer. Uh, the other thing that I want to show real quick. So this I've noticed, um, I played around with some of the filters cause I think there is like, you can, 
um, filter at the appropriation level, but I was running into some oddities there. So I'm going to pick no filter and just create one real quick uh, with the run by appropriation so that you can see that. I think this is more of like an informational option than something where you'd be like loading it back in anyway, because like a PO has got to be expenditure level. Um, but just to show you what this does, and I see your question. Hang on, let me see. All right, so let me show you this. Um, so, so now you can see our account code is based on appropriation account. And if we went over here, if we were looking at our account grid and we looked at the appropriation accounts, then these figures would be based on this grid. Oops, sorry, should have let it load on this grid here, the appropriation. So the question is, is there any way to prevent um, accounts with zero amounts from pulling onto the spreadsheet? You know, I, this is a really good question. I was thinking about this earlier. And um, so the account filter itself is only going to filter down accounts. Uh, the good thing is, like, I know that it's a lot to look at when you're in here, but it's because this is zero, like, it's never going to prorate any figures to those accounts. Uh, definitely when you download it into Excel, you could filter those out. The POCSV, let's keep an eye on that because um, I don't remember off the top of my head if it has lines for the zeros or not, but um, we'll double check that when we get there. Um, but as far as like actually just creating the um, creating the grid within here, it there's, I don't think there's a way to filter out the zeros um, at this point, but it's not going to get an amount. All right. The other thing you can do is uh, get more specific, like with the filters too. Uh, so my example right now is uh, like here, we'll look at this proration utility. Uh, I'm sorry, proration again. Oops, sorry. And the other thing is, the next thing we're going to do is kind of go look at these pieces and go look at this account filter. And this is like a very basic filter. So when this is being used in like actual practice, like they might have a much more complex account filter that like narrows it down to the accounts that they know they want, they know they use. Um, so mine also might have a lot more zeros just because it's so broad. <laughs> okay. All right, so yeah, so I wanted to pull this back up. Let me see. All right, the last thing, let's look at this and then we're going to kind of hop around and look at those things like the account filter is this create POCSV. Um, and, hmm, okay, I don't want to get ahead. I'm tempted to do a test right now, but let's just look at this first. So the first thing we have here is file name. And this works the same thing as we talked about with this. It's just going to be like, when I, save a, when I save a file to my computer, like what's it going to name it? I could leave it as purchase order. Um, I could, you know, add whatever. I could name it whatever I wanted there. Account mapping. So this is going to require us to go into the account page and set it up in advance, sort of like an account filter. The same like idea is how you'd set that up on another page and then just select the name of it here. So in my drop down, you see I have a couple created. And the main goal of this, the main like point of having this here is in my examples, you see I'm pulling these, um, the accounts that I'm pulling are salary accounts. So I'm saying, okay, how much did I charge? How much is expended to these salary accounts? But when I actually go to post the purchase order, like, so say it's for workers comp, I don't necessarily want to post that to the salary accounts. Like I want the amounts to be based on the salary accounts, but then I want to actually create my PO to the benefit accounts. And so that's what we're going to be accomplishing with this account mapping tool is we're going to be able to say, okay, so if this is a uh, like a classified salary account, then it needs to be this specific object code for the benefit account. And so that kind of lets us change that in the process of creating the spreadsheet to save a bunch of work on the on the Excel side. So, so that's really, really helpful. The purchase order number, when we go uh, to create this, we could enter a purchase order number if we have one in mind, or we could just leave that blank. And um, when it's imported, it'll just assign a purchase order number. Vendor, so uh, we can leave this as no vendor and it'll 
create the purchase order as like a multi-vendor and then they could go assign one. Um, or you could just select if there's a certain vendor at this point, you could select it and then that would go on my import spreadsheet. When my PO is created, it would, it would be on there. Um, and then a purchase order date. So, so we've talked about a couple pieces now with the account mapping and the account filter. So what we're going to do, and this is kind of where my presentation goes to, is we're going to kind of go look at those pieces and then we'll, we'll kind of like bring it all back together and we'll go through a full example uh, using that proration utility, you know, with these pieces now that we've seen them. So, okay, so um, the utilities menu, I mentioned, you know, proration utility. So that's like an easy one to remember that is on the utilities menu, but also account filter and account code mapping are also on that same menu. Oops. Okay, so here's where we're going. We're going to utilities account filters. And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to go ahead and create a new one because, again, this is pretty simple, but let's open this one that um, I was using before. Let's take a look at it, you know, and kind of talk through, like, if we were creating this, what it would look like. So, first of all, the name. Uh, this can be any name you want, you know, the workers' comp ones. Uh, if, if that's, you know, for our example, what we're doing, then, you know, that's like, a that's nice and easy to find. One thing we found, and I think there, I think there's a, a feedback issue about this, but but just a note that we have because uh, this can happen just with the, with the nature of the name workers comp is um don't put an apostrophe in there in the filter name that can mess it up. So watch out for that. <laughs> but uh, I, I again, I believe we have a um a feedback issue to to change that in the future. But for now, easy fix to just avoid it. But um workers comp. And then this one, we have like workers comp proration because this is our example. Active. So, you know, um, the filters can be made inactive and then they'll, you know, they won't be able to be used anymore. So in our case, we want this to be active. And then this filter, again, very simple. So our TI says expenditure accounts. That's what the O2 is. And then in this case, we just said, let's pull everything that's an object that starts with one. So let's pull all of those salary accounts. And then R is for read only. So for any sort of like report, like if I'm using a filter for like a report um, to get data, to read the data. So in this case, I need to tell my filter, read this account. Um, and then it's going to be able to pull that data into the spreadsheet that we're generating. So, so that's what our account filters looks like. Um, if uh, the account filters, I did a training not too long ago on that. So I know that recording's out there and linked. So if you have more questions on account filters, I would um, definitely recommend going back to that one because uh, I go into all these different options here. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we're going to keep it for the basics on this. So boom, save that up. They have the account filter created. And like, again, like this is totally just our example with workers comp, but there could be definitely other things like the insurance benefits was an example. Like if there's any other, like certain group of accounts that, that they might want to pull to be able to equally spread, um, a total amount over, they could make this as like simple or complex as they want for the situation. Okay, and next we're gonna go to, okay, so again, utilities, and we're going to this account code mapping. Now, um, if you've been in the payroll side, <laughs> you uh, may have heard of account code mapping before. And uh, this is very, this is a really like similar idea to that, right? So, so let's open this one up to look. expand this a little bit. And so I know there's a lot going on on this one, but uh, let's just start at the top. So name, again, this is what we're going to select from the menu. Right now, uh, the only type that's available is expenditure accounts. We added this piece pretty much, I, I believe it's exclusively for this proration utility situation. 
Although, you know, in the future, like the type it's there, but you can't select it because like, if we need to use that for something else, then, you know, then that could, uh, more options could become available. Um, but what we're looking at down here is so you have this left side, this is the source, and then this is the target in, in this column. So the source account is basically saying in the context of what we're talking about, um, on that proration utility, I'm, I'm generating, I'm creating that spreadsheet. And on it, I chose all of those accounts that have the object starting with 100. So those are all my salary accounts. So now this is gonna say when you see a salary account where the function starts with one and the object starts with one, I want you to change that when I generate my PO sheet, change that to 001, this is the object code, and it's gonna change those specific parameters of the account code on the sheet that I'm generating. So it's not changing anything in the system, like it's not actually like updating anything, it's just a matter of saying like, if this is the data that's getting pulled from the proration utility, this is what I want it to change it to on my spreadsheet. So, um, and mainly this is so that again, like the object codes, it's like the salary. Okay, if they if their salary was charged to this account, I want their benefit to be charged to this other account and this other corresponding account. And um, you can have as many of these as you want. Um, this does work a little bit how like account filters do or how it works on the USPS side where this order can be important. Um, in this case, these are all pretty different. Uh, I also have, um, let's see, I think I have, there we go. So I also have this slide here. The wild cards are a little bit different. Um, so this explains, you know, the source is, that left side column, target is the right side column. Um, but then if you see down here, like, so the asterisk is basically like your blanket wild card. And so that's a little bit different than what you're used to on the grids. The percent is match any one character. Um, number is for like numbers. So really like, I, I feel like usually there, like, there are these options so you can get really specific, but uh, the asterisk will, will work for us. Uh, most of the any like general uh, wild cards you may need to use. So you can see here. So like this, um, having the wild card in this fund means any fund. So when I'm looking through the spreadsheet, any if it has no matter what the fund is, if the function starts with one, I'm going to take that account and I'm going to map it to what you put in the target. Okay. Okay, so let's see, oops, um, I wanna go to this, sorry for the clicking, go to the next one. Uh, the account filter, we talked about that. Um, here's our account mapping. So so sort of in our spreadsheet, this gives you, a, I'm sorry, not on our spreadsheet, on our presentation, uh, this kind of gives a little bit more detail to um, what is, what we're looking at with um, each of these. And you know what? I did just realize, I'm not sure if I linked this presentation to our uh, training page, but I'll make sure to do that. I'll double check right after this. If it's not, I will make sure to do that so that you can ref have this to refer back to. Okay. All right, so then now we're to the point where we're going to actually walk through and um, kind of go back to what we were looking at before with the proration utility, but we'll, let's actually walk through the whole process now. Okay, so calendar year to date, and then we'll go back, we'll pick our filter here. Uh, I don't want to run it by appropriation, I want those expenditure accounts. And actually, you know what? I'm I'm gonna create the PO sheet so I don't even need to put in a file name. Okay. Okay, so I have my accounts here and I wanna show, you know, I actually probably should have talked about this before. Oh, okay. All right, so Michelle Michelle checked and uh, sees a link to the PowerPoint. So we might be good, it might be out there. <laughs> um, awesome. 
Alrighty. So uh, the other thing, okay, so this is what I was going to mention before, but um, this, I mean, it works in our example, but this is like one of the really um, key pieces, I think, especially when we're talking about this workers comp example. So, you know, now we've pulled in um, our accounts that we want. We pulled in the, the um, salary accounts. Now, this is our field where we're going to put in the amount we want to spread out. And um, if you've ever like seen the figures for workers comp before, or like, you know, even the throwback to the classic, there was like a workers comp, um, like report that we had in classic at one point, they, uh, they usually get like, um, they usually get a rate that's like, uh, really a percentage, you know, and then they have to like do this calculation based on this percentage. And so, uh, the total that you put in here, like might need to account for that. And so um, this works very similar to Excel, where before I just put in the number, like I just put in 75,000, right? But I could put in my total. So let's say it's like, let's do 100,000, but I need that multiplied by whatever their workers comp rate is. So let's just do like 0023 or whatever. And so if I needed it to be that amount, like I could do that. And then when I do um, enter here, it's going to calculate it, whatever my um, expression was, whatever my calculation was in this spreadsheet. And now it'll take the um, the calculation of that and spread that out. So here we go. Sorry, I keep losing my scroll bar at the bottom. So see, now I have much smaller figures over here. And when I get to the bottom, that's just going to be this total. So, so yeah, so uh, that might be a piece that, that they use as well. And so you can kind of see my expression up here. So again, I just typed in this, I started with the equal sign, the same way with like Excel, when you need to do any calculation, you can do that. All right. Alrighty. So then let's go ahead, create our POCSV. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and choose our uh, mapping that we talked about. Uh, we can put in a, so again, this is like, if you want, if you have like a custom purchase order, if you know you want this to be in a certain series, you can use this purchase order number, but uh, you don't have to, uh, you could choose a vendor, but you don't have to, um, you know, obviously like, I don't think that these would normally be a multi-vendor. So if you say no vendor, it'll get created as a multi-vendor, but then you can update it on the purchase order later. So you know what? Let's just like, I know office supplies doesn't make sense, but I'm just going to pick one so we can see. Um, and then our purchase order date. And let's go ahead and download this. All right, we'll get this opened up here. Make sure it opens on. Okay, so one thing, it's a CSV. Um, I'm gonna click, I have to drag it over from my other screen here, but I wanna show you this. So this is like part of Excel that pops up. I'm going to click don't convert because I don't want to lose any like leading zeros or anything like that. And then boom. Okay. So here's what we're looking at. So, um, so based on that information that I entered when I was um, doing that download, like PO number, if I had entered in a PO number, it would place it in this column, the date, that was the date. Um, and again, if I kind of, I kind of go like this real quick. So see uh, purchase order number, the date, like that is directly defining what I'm seeing in this spreadsheet. My vendor number, I picked vendor number five. And then all of these columns are are the columns that I need to import as a, as um I'm sorry, import into a PO. The item numbers, uh, so this, it's basically going to generate just one PO with all of these as separate items. 
the item description it does keep the uh the account item description however now that you have this as a as a spreadsheet as a csv like you could easily go through and um update this so like if you wanted to be the this to be like you know workers comp um i could go through and just easily change all of my item descriptions um and then here's my my unit price is based on those totals that that prorated amount that we figured out within the program and then the other key piece here is our account code column and you know what i'm so sorry i realize i probably should have zoomed in on this let's get a little bit, bit bigger here so um so here was our unit price so here is our account code and so you can see this is where it took and it said okay so my first account, it matched, it had the function that started with one. So, and it had the, um, I'm, I'm sorry, the object, yeah, it had the function and then the object code that started with one because they all did. And I changed that to this um, object code, the 261, based on what you told me with the account mapping. And so if I scroll through here, some of these see where the 262 so these all kind of just automatically modified based on the mapping that we picked when we did this um, download option um, or the option to create the PO CSV rather. Okay, so what do we do with this, right? Um, let me go ahead and save that. And then what I'm going to do with this now is we're going to go over to our purchase order grid. So that's transaction purchase orders. And I have this handy import option right here. So when I do that, I can go ahead and choose the file. And let's see. Sorry, I want to do my quick access. Just find it for us real quick here. Okay, purchase order one, CSV, and then we just do load. And then it took a second. I have records loaded um, one because I put all of those in one PO. And then my errors were zero. If I had any errors, it does give me those as a CSV so that I could... Um, I could take that information, I can see what was wrong, um, and then be able to update that and then re-import. But uh, let's look at this then. So once I close out of this, see it pops up right here. Um, and let's look. So it assigned my next available PO number. Here was my PO date. I have my uh, vendor that I selected on there. And then um, when I come down here, I have all of my um, all of my different line items that I added. And you know what? Uh, we were supposed to check and see if there were any ones with zeros and I don't see them. So I do think that when we got to the uh, the PO stage, when we created uh, the actual PO CSV, it, it doesn't bring over and it doesn't have all these like, you know, line items that are zero. It only brings over the ones that ended up having amounts. And so, you know, I mean, that could be another trick here. If, uh, so let's go back real quick to our proration utility. So say we want to create this. So when you create, um, well, I guess it's going to be, hmm, you probably want, yeah. So, so basically you could do this and then you could put in your amount. And then if I just do, let's, we, I guess we didn't really look at the um, download in Excel. So I'm going to open that real quick. So if I were to do this and then, you know, I have this, so obviously this is the view where it, it does have those um, zeros. Is, I wonder, delete that? No, no, can't delete that. 
So let me put a filter in here. Oh yeah, it does. Okay, hang on, let me zoom in a little for you. So what I did, I just clicked on the column header and then I do sort and filtering. I'm, I like to add this uh, so I can filter and then I can come here and let's just uh, take out any that are zero. There we go. And so I can just use my filters then in Excel um, to pretty quickly get that down to just show me the ones that have amounts. So, um, so that's an option for getting like the full spreadsheet. And then, I mean, technically, if you just wanted to see the line items too, here was my other thought is that when I create this POCSV, since this is automatically going to filter out any ones that are zeros, if I do no mapping, it'll keep the original accounts. So technically you could just go ahead and download that too. You don't always have to import that in, but then you're getting a lot of other information from like that you would need for the PO that you may not actually need for that. So it kind of depends on like, you know, what they're using it for, how they want to see it. Um, I think ultimately like, you know, definitely when they, um, I definitely when they're like loading in to make it a purchase order, like I can totally understand they don't want those extra columns on there too. So, so that part, you don't have to worry about it. Awesome. Yeah. The filter in Excel is, um, that, that is definitely nice. And so I do this all the time. I wasn't sure with the, uh, with having the first row here, how it was going to work, but as long as I just clicked on the header row, then it knew. Um, so yeah, so that's good to go. And then, um, I think let's hop back over here. So we went through all this. Oh, you know what? Well, hang on. We'll go through here. Okay. So, so this kind of just has, you know, the example of the options that I talked through a little bit more detail, um, here and then yes that's all we have so our next Fridays with Fiscal is uh January 5th we have um the December release recap and uh let me hop over I'm gonna go to our wiki real quick and then we'll go to our training and registration since um I believe we have the link out here. Pat helped with the Pat made this PowerPoint and everything. So um she's a rock star and she probably didn't put it out here already for, for us. So that's why I don't know. But um <laughs> but yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yes. So this is so everything that I went through today um is already out here. Um I'll be saving this up as a recording and we'll link that out here too if this is something you need to review. But um, hey, I made it. I did finish a little bit early today. So uh, if you have questions, let me know. Um, but thanks for the questions along the way. And, um, you know, if not, I hope everyone has a great weekend. Thank you so much for attending today.